Here we see that in the medicine of India, they too had the idea that the child was formed from semen and blood. Now we shall look at Galen. Galen was born in 131 AD in Pergamum, northern Bergama in Turkey. Galen says on semen, the substance from which the fetus is formed is not merely menstrual blood, as Aristotle maintained, but menstrual blood plus the two semens. The Quran agrees with Galen here when it says in Surah 76.2, we created man from a drop of mingled sperm. Now we'll look at the Galen stages. Galen also taught that the embryo developed in stages. The first is that in which the form of the semen prevails. The next stage is when it has been filled with blood and heart and brain and liver are still unarticulated and unshaped. This is the period that Hippocrates called fetus. The Quranic Surah 22.5 reflects this saying, then out of a morsel of flesh partly formed and partly unformed. And now the third period of gestation has come. This, thus it, it, nature caused flesh to grow on and around all the bones. We saw above that the Quran agrees with this in Surah 23, 14, where it says, and we clothe the bones with meat. The fourth and final period Sorry, the fourth and final period is at the stage when all the parts of the, in the limbs have been differentiated. Galen was so important in medicine that just about the time of the Hejra, four leading medical men in Alexandria, Egypt, decided to form a medical school using 16 books of Galen as the basis of the studies. This considered, continued up to and including the 13th century. We must now ask ourselves, what was the political, economic, and medical situation in Arabia at the time of Mohammed? From the Hadramaut in Yemen, the caravans of the spice trade passed north through Mecca and Medina and then reached into all of Europe. In North Arabia, in about 500 AD, the Ghassanids took over, and by 528, they controlled the Syrian desert over to the outskirts of Medina. Syriac, a form of Aramaic related to Arabic, was their official language. As early as 463, the Jews translated the Torah and Old Testament from Hebrew into Syriac. The British Museum has a copy. This made it available to the Ghassan, who were Christians, and to the Jewish tribes in Arabia. During this time, Sergius el Rasaini, who died in Constantinople in 536, one of the earliest and greatest translators from Greek into Syriac translated various works on medicine, including 26 works of Galen. This made them available in the kingdom of Khosru I in Persia and to the Ghassan tribe whose influence extended to the outskirts of Medina. Khosru I, Arabic Kisra, king of Persia, was known as Khosru the Great. His troops conquered areas as far away as Yemen, and he also loved learning and started several schools. The school of Jundi Shapur became, during Khosru I's long reign of 48 years, the greatest intellectual center of the time. Within its walls, Greek, Jewish, Nestorian, Persian, and Hindu thought and experience were freely exchanged. Teaching was done largely in Syriac, from Syriac translations of Greek texts. This meant that Aristotle, Hippocrates, and Galen were readily available when the medical school at Jindishapur was operating during his reign. The next step was that the conquering Arabs compelled the Nestorians to translate their Syriac texts of Greek medicine into Arabic. The translation from Syriac to Arabic was easy, as the two languages had the same grammar. Concerning the local medical situation during Muhammad's life, we know there were physicians living in Arabia during this period. Harith ben Kalada was the best educated physician trained in the healing arts. He was born about the middle of the 6th century at Taif in the tribe of Bani Thaqif. He traveled through Yemen and then Persia where he received his education in the medical sciences at the great medical school of Jundi Shapur and thus was intimately acquainted with the medical teachings of Aristotle 
Hippocrates, and Galen. Having completed his studies, he practiced as a physician in Persia. And during this time, he was called to the court of King Khosru, with whom he had a long conversation. He came back to Arabia about the beginning of Islam and settled down at Taif. While there, Abu al-Khair, a king of Yemen, came to see him in connection with a certain disease, and on being cured, rewarded him with much money and a slave girl. Though Harith bin Khalada did not write any book on medicine, his views on many medical problems are preserved in his conversation with Khosru. About the eye, he says that it is constituted of fat, which is the white part. About the, and then the second is constituted with water, which is the black part, and of wind, which constitutes the eyesight. Well, these things we know to be wrong now, but this was Greek thought. All this goes to show the acquaintance of Harith with the Greek doctors. Summarizing the situation in a few words in his book, Histoire de la Médecine Arabe, Dr. Lucien Leclerc writes, Harith ben Khalada studied medicine at Jandi Shapur, and Muhammad owed to Harith a part of his medical knowledge. Thus with, with the, thus, with the one as well as the other, we easily recognize the traces of Greek medicine. Sometimes Muhammad treated the sick, but in the difficult cases, he would send the patients to Harith. Another educated man, person around Muhammad was Nader bin Harith. Not related to the doctor, he was a Karashite. 